Welcome back to the lab. Today we're going to talk about a little success story. Ha, man, that's a relief. Sure, we've been hitting a couple roadblocks with a particular power supply design and we've been working through that, but I'm really feeling a win coming on today. Let's buy a little bit of time while we finish redesigning that power supply by testing some awesome little circuits that only require five volts to operate, which is perfect. Yes, indeed. We've got a lot of little circuits to test. Analog voltage references, temperature sensors, an isolation amplifier, isolated current sensor. Yep, fun stuff. Really fun stuff. I can't wait. Many of these circuits are single chip solutions. Some of them are a small modification to what we had in the previous UPS. But in the case of our analog reference especially, I really want to investigate this. We skipped over this in our previous testing. Well, the testing of our phase one UPS. I noticed something bizarre, some bizarro world inaccuracies on our Gen 1 UPS temperature monitors. Super not okay. It leads me to believe that either our implementation of the temperature sensor or our implementation of the analog voltage reference had a serious problem, like instability kind of serious. Ye. Yeah, look at this. These temperature monitors are all at the same temperature. The UPS has not been working. These are all room temperature, and we're seeing a 10 degree spread in the measured temperature. That's not okay. That's not okay. I want to take advantage of the 1% accurate temperature sensors that we put on this board. Like if I wanted a 10% accurate sensor, I would have paid for that. We paid for better. I want the benefit. After a little bit of testing in our live stream, we saw that the 2.2 microfarad capacitor, even though it had a 5.11 ohm resistor, but the capacitor that we added to the output of these references was a little too much, and the 2.2 microfarad capacitive load was causing the internal buffer op amp to become unstable. Not what I would call ideal. This instability led to what we measured to be a voltage ripple of about 100 millivolts on the top of that 4.096 volt reference. That's a pretty big deal. That's like 2.5% instantaneous error, even if the DC steady state accuracy was dead on. That depends on when the ADC pulls a measurement, right? We could be at the plus 100 millivolts or the minus 100 millivolts, and that could seriously impact the accuracy of what we're measuring. We're measuring everything with respect to that reference, so if the reference isn't accurate, nothing is. We've tried reducing the value of that capacitance, which decreased its effect, which is both good and bad, with marginal success, but eventually we were to a point where we kept the capacitor the same, but replaced our 5 ohm resistor with a 5k ohm resistor. Hey, and now it was stable. That reference was solid as a rock, and we were able to make excellently accurate voltage measurements, which led to excellently accurate temperature measurements. That's awesome. Because, well, these two temperature sensors are right next to each other on the board, so if they're measuring a couple degrees separately, like, no, they're soldered to the same ground plane. They're the same temperature. That is one great success story, but I think our whole live stream went pretty well. I think we worked our way through all of these tests pretty quickly, but then again, it was a two hour live stream, so maybe it wasn't that fast. I guess everything is relative. It's pretty fast for me. <laughs> Anyways, there were a couple other highlights from the stream. I wanna make sure we don't miss those. First things first, why did we add a capacitor on the output of our voltage reference? I mean, the data sheet says, just hook the op amp up to the input of your ADC and don't worry about it. Well, I worry about it, okay? Because I know, I know that whenever this ADC runs, it's gonna pull a little gulp of current. And that's gonna cause the transient response of this reference to be significant, right? This is going to pull a gulp of current and the op amp is going to be at some steady state value and it's gonna go, oh wait, we need to catch up. And there's gonna be this little blip. And well, if that blip is significant enough, it might lead to an inaccurate measurement. So I plopped a big honking capacitor on there. <laughs> That's a technical term, a big honking 2.2 microfarad capacitor there. So there's a big, big tank of energy. There's this big bucket of energy that that ADC can pull from. So it can grab whatever it needs without significantly affecting the voltage. And in my opinion, planning on that little gulp of energy rather than just saying, eh, it's insignificant. I don't know, maybe it's worse, maybe it's better. But if I put in the capacitor and the resistor and we see a problem, I can always take that capacitor out of circuit and short out that resistor with a zero ohm and we have effectively the same thing. It's harder to add pads for the capacitor and resistor and I prefer planning for a zero amp RMS current with little gulps 
being taken whenever we're taking an ADC measurement. That's just how I prefer to do it. Now, there are some options here. We could use a slightly different version of this reference and put the feedback pin out on the other side of that filter. But now we've added this massive phase delay in the control loop, and that makes me a little uncomfortable. Just a little bit. I don't know if I wanna do that. So we'll see, we'll see. I'll think about that more. While we're talking about RC filters, we did the same thing for the temperature monitors, right? We added a series resistor and a capacitor. And while I don't have any evidence that would suggest that what we're doing is a problem, the fact that we know that one op amp became unstable because we added a 2.2 mic five ohms away, I figure why take the risk? Let's add a 1K resistor here and see if we can observe the same effect. So we're using a 1K resistor with a one microfarad. So that was a tweak on those component values as well. And that should provide plenty of energy for when our ADC is measuring that specific input. Based on what we saw, it looked excellent, right? We were seeing two voltages that were bang on right next to each other when we measured the DMM, just a millivolt or two separate. And we're again, measuring 10 millivolts per degree Celsius. So we would expect that we get the same temperature and we did, perfect. Moving on then, the POR generator was the next circuit that we dug into and the POR generator was working okay. Well, at least the five volt power on reset generator was working great. We saw a reset pulse that was a couple of milliseconds long, deasserted when power was good, perfect. The 3V3 didn't generate a reset pulse. Yeah, I need to dig into that a little further. I'm not sure if it didn't trigger a reset because our 3v3 rail just jumped up really, really fast and it didn't have a chance to do anything. Or if the IC wasn't soldered on correctly or we damaged it with heat, I might just replace the part and see what happens. Or maybe feed the 3v3 rail with like an RC filter to turn it on slower, not sure. But I do know that the five volt rail comes on much slower due to the built-in soft start further investigation required, but we saw it work once and come on, it's a power on reset generator. It should not be that hard. It's just like a data sheet. We're verifying that the data sheet value is correct for reset time and it was. So anyways, the analog isolation amplifier was a little more custom here, right? We're measuring the difference between line and neutral and we're doing this with two single ended op amps because we don't really have a negative reference. So we're measuring one positive voltage with respect to the other and vice versa, diode oring the output and then putting that into our isolation amplifier. There is a lot that could go wrong here, but it worked, right? We were using a dual sine wave, so a positive and negative sine wave, subtracting the two from each other. And we saw that the output was exactly two times the input sine wave. Perfect. But this was within 1% accuracy of the input voltage. And that is just great. So while we're here, we had a little bit of fun. We subtracted a triangle from a sine wave, a square wave from a sine wave, a triangle from a square, and eventually realized we were just playing around and moved on to more tests. But this thing was working great. I'm very confident that once we tweak the high side resistor value to scale our massive mains voltage down to a volt or two, this will get that information across the isolation barrier. No problem at all. Current measurement was also fine, but this was probably the least impressive test that we did. We're pumping current through a Hall effect sensor. It's one component. We measured the output on the pin, but hey, power integrity was sufficient in this implementation, which tells us that there was enough decoupling and bulk capacitance near the part. Now, of course, we've talked about a lot, you know, we're pretty serious getting a lot of work done, but now let's not neglect the shining moment of our stream. Let's not neglect the highest achievement that we accomplished. Let's not neglect the pinnacle of technology in this UPS, the most critical feature, the absolute best thing to happen to this UPS project. Yep, native RGB fan support. Much like a modern computer, it only seemed fitting to add support for the standard red, green, blue, or RGB implementation. This is the three pin digital interface that runs off five volts, not the 12 volt analog one. And I think this is just great. We'll plot down a couple of these headers and just have a blast. Turns out at least some of these products use the standard WS2812B LEDs, or at least these fans in particular, the ones that we purchased for this project, link in the description. Uh, those are compatible with the communication protocol present on WS2812B LEDs. So yeah, this is one of those not essential, but very cool features. I don't know why, but I'm just glad to know it'll be possible to deck out this UPS with RGB fans. While installing this UPS into a computer chassis with tempered glass, 
these LEDs, all the modern flare, that may not be the most practical or even that might not be the safest move. Putting this in a steel box where you can't see anything and it's fireproof, maybe that's the better move. But like tempered glass side panels in RGB, am I right? It would certainly be cool, and I'm not sure if I'll be able to resist the temptation of making this power converter the true showpiece that it deserves to be. Maybe I shouldn't, but I mean, at least just for a little bit to observe it, and then like, you know, we can put it in a reasonable steel box later so it's fireproof, right? So anyways, what did we do today? Nothing, a lot of things, I don't know, it kind of feels like both. But I know that we finally got the analog voltage references working well, which is huge. That is so critically important for the accuracy of the voltage regulation of this UPS. We're using this microcontroller to drive the control loop. We need an accurate analog voltage reference. We also verified that some of the other critical circuits are operational, which is great. One more bug crushed, a few more risks mitigated, and one huge step towards the UPS coming together well. This is awesome, but there's always more to do. So if you like what you saw today and you can't wait for more power supply testing, consider subscribing to be notified of our future videos. We're about to finish the detailed power supply analysis using the new buck converter design to test the 5, 12, and 15 volt converters, as well as adding the 24 volt backup supply into the fray. Awesome stuff. Absolutely marvelous. If you want to support the channel, consider checking out the products that we feature today through our Amazon affiliate links in the description. It really helps us out a lot. Thank you. If you like this video, let me know by hitting that like button or leaving a comment letting us know what's on your mind. Most of all, I hope you learned something great today and I hope to see you again soon. So thanks for watching EE for everyone and thank you for staying till the end. Bye.